Okay, let's get started. Uh, first thing we're going to do is going to set up Blender to make the workflow go a little easier. Uh, first thing you'll notice is that I'm using uh, one of the latest builds uh, from graphicall.org. I'm using build 54229. Um, you can look that up. It's uh, one of the latest builds and it's got, uh, it's got a lot of the features uh, coming towards Blender's next release. Okay. First thing I'm going to do again, uh, I'm just going to go here to preferences, go to add ons, and um, there's four add ons here in particular I'm going to use. Um, one is already set, uh, it's the dynamic spacebar menu, that's just a time saver. Um, one will be the 3D navigation, which was a uh, which it help. Um, the next one is going to be the ant landscape. Even though we're not going to use it much in this um, tutorial, uh, I do want to dis discuss an alternative um, to sculpting terrain using the ant landscape add-on. And finally, we're going to go down to the relax under the mesh, and that's going to be very useful for uh, later down the road and um, that's, that's just about it for the add-ons um, there is a little setup I'm going to do with the camera and the light the first thing I'm going to do is going to change the light to uh, Hemi but, but we'll deal with that lighting more later later on and then the next thing I'm going to do is going to select both the light and the camera I'm going to press M I'm going to move it to a new layer so that way it's out of the way while we're modeling and um well that's all that's all there is to to my um, setup here and now we can just dig in dig into the actual modeling before we get into the actual modeling process I want to talk a bit about the planning stage um, it's necessary to have a planning stage even if it's just a brief one or, or a simple one um, in this case I did a little research I did research on canyons and I came across one that I liked in particular. It's called the uh, the Blyde River Canyon located in South Africa. Um, I chose this one because it's a green canyon and by green canyon I mean um, well this. <laughs> it's a lot of green on the canyon as opposed to the Grand Canyon where there's very little green. I looked it up on Wikipedia and I got some information about it. got a sense of you know what it's like there you know like for instance the canyon consists consistent consists, consists mostly of redstone red sandstone um, I incorporated that into my my planning stage which I've done here I made an isoline map uh, over here and it's explain this a little bit in uh, this would be a coastline for the river this is the canyon wall this canyon wall here this will be a little island in the middle of the of the uh, river and here's a little information about the canyon that I, I, I envisioned in my head based on the information I researched um, let's see here we go uh, here's a, uh, another picture with the angle view of a mock-up I made and it is very helpful to have this little mock-up because it helped it helped to make the idea more solid in my head um, and furthermore here is the mood board I made based on images I googled um, this is a very big board it's uh, let me just show you so how much details in these pictures it's a very big picture um, this will be available in the example files but I encourage you to make your own. In fact, just make your own terrain all together. Uh, it just doesn't have to be based on Bly River Canyon as I've done here. Um, this is a, a guideline I'm going to use for, for myself here. And, um, and that, that's just about it for, the, for, for planning. It's just good to have some kind of concept or mock-up or you know, research in mind before you just start modeling. Okay, let's get to sculpting. First thing you want to do, naturally, you want to delete the default cube. Press X for that. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hit spacebar. I'm going to add a plane. I'm going to scale it up 10 times. 
and then I'm going to go to object context here and sub context and um, hit wire and now I'm going to press 7 on a number pad I'm going to go here to the object modifier and choose subdivision surface go to simple I'm going to add 6 enter I'm going to apply that and then I'm going to enter um, edit mode press A to deselect the faces and I'm going to I'm going to work with this low division this low subdivision level um, of mesh and mold it before I'm working on making it a higher mesh okay now what I'm going to do I'm going to press C C is as you may know is the brush the brush select and uh, here's how it works okay and um, show you a few things about it. Uh, of course, you press C that makes it work. It makes it uh, toggle. Uh, if you scroll wheel up, you uh, you zoom the size down and scroll scroll wheel down makes it larger. That's very helpful. I'm going to use it right now. And you can uh, just start selecting with the left mouse but mouse button and. Um, I'm just going to make a general shape here and then you can confirm your selection with the, either the right mouse button or enter but if you have uh, something you want to delete you use the middle mouse button just hold it down and that will delete the uh, selections but I'm going to keep that selection there and then I'm going to press enter and now I'm going to control I which will invert invert the selection and that is very useful now the reason why I'm, I'm showing this right quick is because I'm I'm going to enter a bit of a time lapse here after this after explaining this uh, because I'm going to work without talking uh, just for a while when it, when I get to the main sculpting that is okay now what I want to do I want to press O now that's going to toggle the proportion, proportional editing mode and uh, that's going to give it a bit of a fall off while I transform the, the selected faces now I'm going to hold the transform along the z-axis and as you'll see uh, you can bring that the selections up um, higher, but I'm going to scroll with, while holding the uh, left mouse, bu mouse button. I'm going to scroll wheel down. And that's going to give me this bit of, con of control over the fall off, and that's really what I'm looking for. And I'm going to keep it right there. And then I'm going to hold control and then the minus on the number pad, and that's going to reduce my selection and conversely if you control plus on the number pad it'll increase the selection but, but uh, I'm going to keep that there and now I'm going to again transform along the z-axis and I'm going to scroll wheel until I find one that uh, a fall off that I like uh, I'll keep it right there and I'm going to do this about one more time of the control minus and I'm going to transform up one more time scroll wheel up to reduce the fall off and that'll work now if you just get out of edit mode go to object mode I'm going to turn the wire off right quick and I'm going to smooth that you begin to see what you can you can do with, with this simple method and this is before you even get to sculpting to get to the details um, it's very important that you work um, with the low res first yeah, I could I could have gone actual um, actually a few subdivisions fewer than this one actually because once you start getting to the higher subdivisions it gets harder to control 
what you select and what and it bogs down the computer a lot. Uh, anyway, with that said, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to cover. Um, no. Well, also, I'm gonna go to top view. Um, press N to get to the properties. I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to edit mode real quick. And I'm gonna check the dimensions now. You want to try to keep the dimensions um, even on the X and the Y axis, and that's for uh, a later process uh, I'm gonna be showing. Um, but if if it gets if it's a little bit over, then don't worry about it for now. Uh, but with that said, I'm gonna enter the sculpting time lapse. Okay, I'm back. I just want to explain a little bit of a uh, little bit of what I did there. Um, as you can tell, I mirrored the the terrain. 
Uh, that wasn't part of the plan originally, but um, I decided later in, in the modeling process that I wanted to mirror it to uh, give it a longer look. Because uh, again, this is, uh, if you remember from this uh, plan, it's supposed to be a mile long. And, um, and even though this, this terrain is very large, is, uh, and you won't really get a sense of scale until we add a detail, I still want the, the terrain to be uh, longer because I, I have to make it wider, as you can tell, because uh, the, the river is really wide. Um, I want to open that up some more, and so that called for making it longer. But um, just uh, this noting this little issue here with the clipping, uh, just bring the merge limit up with clipping on, and bring it up to about 800, about 800, uh, right on there. That'll work. You know, the topology doesn't really matter too much because um, you actually ought to make a height map out of this uh, terrain, and um, and that's that's really what we're after. So uh, you don't have to worry about topology too much here. And I'm just gonna hit apply. Oh, actually, um, let's see. Yeah, I'll hit apply. And uh, yeah, we can now go on to the next step. Now we're gonna go on to some masking. The scope mode.
Okay, well that's all for now. I'm going to leave the video here because uh, it'll get pretty long uh, if I continue just one long run on video. Um, well, I just want to explain myself a little bit on this uh, sculpt here. Um, here, the terrains in World Machine 2. Uh, I just want to explain why it looks the way it does. Uh, I'm going to further refine it. This, this part is going to look better with uh, erosion. Erosion is coming from it. Um, I didn't follow the the exact model of the of the uh, canyon here, but I, I want to leave a little to my imagination too. Um, I, th I think it gets a general idea, and it'll, it'll start to look a lot more closer to this once I start adding trees and rocks, and um, when I start, it'll start looking better. Also, when I add the uh, features that that uh, that help give a sense of scale to the model, like this uh, natural bridge that I have in the mock-up. And um, this this I already modeled um, ahead of time, so that's just a matter of importing it um, into the scene. And then um, next time we'll deal with uh, refining this and texturing and adding props and trees and all kind of things. It'll look a lot better and a lot more natural. And uh, well, thank you for watching this video and I hope you learned something, you could take something from it. Um, please leave a comment and or email me if you have any issues with the uh, sample file. And uh, I'll catch you later.